Hello, my loves. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're brand new, my name is Jessica Alexandria. I'm the creator of Bahati Life Apothecary, and I'm a professional astrologer, tarot, and intuitive reader. We are going to be talking about the Gemini solar eclipse that's going to be happening on June 10th, 2021 at 4.48 a.m. Eastern Standard Time is the time that I have the charts pulled for. However, I don't know if you guys are noticing this or not, but the background is a little bit different. This is the sunroom that I manifested and something that I'm so excited to be able to share with you because I love being outside in natural environments. And when I was working on manifesting my home, one of the intentions that I set for myself and one of the things that I saw for myself is the ability to have indoor outdoor living. This means that I feel most comfortable and most at ease when I'm in nature to the point where I wanted my internal home to be a reflection of the beauty and the abundance of nature herself, of course. And this is exactly what I you know, was able to manifest and I'm so grateful. And the gratitude is even more immense when I'm able to share this space with you guys doing what I love and what I respect and what I adore the most, which is astrology, tarot, spirituality, esoteric symbolism, and all of those things. Having said that, I am in a natural environment, which is beautiful, of course. However, there are living, breathing things all around me. Number one, we have Franklin, who is right here over my shoulder. And then you might be able to hear them, but we have little chickens, little chickies, silky chickens. If you don't know what they are, please Google them and look them up. They are the cutest, if you ask me, the cutest animals in the animal, one of the cutest animals in the animal kingdom. They're like little cloud floofs. They're so friendly. They're so cute. They're so adorable. But I have eight of those babies here who are, you know, just literally just born into this earth. Like what a magical experience that was. I hatched them myself. Um, and if you guys are ever interested in hearing about that experience, I'm more than happy to share it with you. And then also the neighborhood that I live in is notorious in the best way possible for um, for the bird life, for the types of birds that it attracts, for the type of birds that come into this area. It is amazing and wonderful to see, but sometimes a random bird comes through and will call out in, in different ways, in loud ways. Anyways, having said that, you guys, oh, do we want to see the chickies really quickly? So, my loves, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to play favorites, but this is one of my favorites. I haven't named him or her yet, but he or she is a cutie cutie. He or she was one of the first ones to be born, to hatch out of the egg. He or she has big old beautiful eyes, which I love the most, and the sweetest personality. So I did not give them a name yet, but we'll see. I kind of give myself some time to vibe with them, to connect with them, and ask them, you know, what do you want to be called for the rest of your life, homie? So that's my little nuggy nug. Number two is my cinnamon baby. I'm pretty sure that she is a silky, but she does have very different plumage than the rest. And then we have this little cloud baby. He looks like a little storm cloud. For those of you guys that don't know, I love storms so much. So it's an honor to be able to have him or her in my space too, to be able to take care of him or her. <laughs> and again, I don't have names for them yet, but I will sit with it and allow them to speak to me. If you guys would like to throw out name suggestions or things that you're feeling for them, feel free to let me know down in the comments. I'm open to receiving all types of you know name recommendations, okay? And then I'll ask them and see what they say. <laughs> all right, my loves, so let's go ahead and dive into this Gemini solar eclipse. So first things first, you guys, Gemini is known for communication. It's known for its ability to send and receive information and its desire to explore, to be curious, and to ask probing questions into what we want to experience and to explore within our lives. And at the time of the solar eclipse, this is when we are invited to dive into that energy even further. What I find so magical is literally last night, I was teaching a class, a lecture, for the Sacred Circle Tarot School. For those of you guys that don't know, it's a really totally immersive dive into the tarot, into esoteric symbolism, into astrology that I teach online to all of my students who are internationally located. It's it's absolutely phenomenal. We go live every Tuesday. I'll link it down below. But one of the one of the conversations and where a conversation 
where I felt guided to take our conversation last night was to talk about the energy of duality because we were diving into the energy of the number two. And for those of you guys that don't know, Gemini is connected to duality. It's connected to the extremes, these polar opposites, right? It's connected to masculine and feminine energy. It's connected to our ability to give, to receive, our ability to connect with the darker side and the lighter sides, and then find a way to merge them together, to align them with us in a way that is for our highest and greatest good and that makes us feel really happy and excited to be here on earth and gives deeper purpose and meaning into our lives here. This is why Gemini is so wired into asking these probing questions because we are guided by spirit to not only just continue to accept the status quo or to accept our current circumstances, but to explore our environment and to be curious to wonder what else might be out there for us. Now, at the time of the solar eclipse, we have uh, Mercury retrograde, which is ruling the energy of the eclipse, one of the energies that's ruling the, the, the eclipse. We have Pluto retrograde, we have Saturn retrograde, and we have Mars who is just about to move into the sign of Leo. We have, but is now currently in the sign of Cancer. We have Jupiter who's in the sign of Pisces and Neptune in the sign of Pisces. We also have a really tight, aggressive square that is happening between Uranus, the planet of disruption that wants to uproot us, that wants us to be uplifted in a way that propels our personal mental emotional spiritual physical advancement and then also we have saturn currently retrograde um in the sign of aquarius that's connecting with aquarius with that's connecting with uranus combating these combating its energy and challenging its energy um and what I'm hearing is the words defeating the status quo. This means that our root, our foundation is literally crumbling out from underneath us. And then instead of us falling into this pit and melting into this like energy of, <laughs> of hot lava, and this is a metaphor, you guys, this is not real. But instead of us crumbling and being powerless, we are actually being caught and lifted up by the divine and how the divine moves through us and speaks to us is through our visions through our prophecies through our intentions through things that we think are so idealistic and so you know how could this ever happen for my life how could this ever manifest itself but literally spirit comes through and says because you allow me you're allowing me to catch you i will not only catch you but i will carry you into this new realm into this new divine purpose into this higher relationship into this higher vibration from that space you guys literally miracles occur literally miracles occur as crazy as as these retrogrades can feel as crazy and as uprooting as the eclipses that we're currently in can be as wild and and punishing as uranus squaring saturn can feel to us honestly it's there to break down these superficial foundations that we would that we felt too comfortable in embedding and resting ourselves in and at the time of the eclipse we are called to ask higher questions of higher depth and value right we are called to engage and explore our curiosity a little further this means that we cannot people please we cannot um be caught in these in these you know spiraling expectations of okay this is what's expected of me this is what i should be doing these are my duties these are my responsibilities i have to continue to show up for this relationship for my career to the world to myself in this way we are guided to step out of those comfort zones right if you are not brand new to my youtube channel you have heard me say multitude of times or maybe if we've crossed paths at some point down the line you have heard me talk about the fact that Chiron has been moving through the sign of Aries. And for those of you guys that don't know, Chiron is the wounded healer. It's the aspect within ourselves that feel that creates pain in order for us to be completely vulnerable so that we can transform and then use that pain to heal ourselves and to heal others. And this has been such an interesting time throughout history because we are totally encouraged to be courageous, to be bold, to be assertive, and prioritizing ourselves 
this is how we define ourselves. This is the I am. And when you sit with spirit and when you sit with the divine and when you sit with your higher self and ask yourself, who am I really? I am divine light. I am a powerful being. I am a powerful messenger. I am a beacon of love and higher vibration. I am a prosperity magnet. When you acknowledge and recognize that that is actually your truth, especially now that Neptune is transiting, moving through the sign of Pisces, the, the, the sign that rules higher vibration, connection to spirit, and that level of truth, when you're able to sit with that and accept that as truth, what can't you do? What can't be done? You know what I mean? It is so powerful and it will change your life forever. So at the time of the eclipse, you guys, I really want to see you set intention around defining yourself in a way that is empowering, uplifting, and expanding not only of your mental, but of your spiritual, your physical, your emotional, and did I get everything? All of the bodies, all of the, all of the bodies, right? Anything that is released from you now, anything that you are shedding now, please trust and believe that it truly needs the freedom and needs the space so that it too can evolve. And as an energetic, high vibrational being, you will inevitably cross paths with whatever it is that you have already said goodbye to or what you are already saying what you are currently saying goodbye to or what you will be called to say goodbye to. It is inevitable that you will cross cross paths with it once again is evolving. There's no way that it's not evolving. There's no way that it's not shape shifting and you yourself are evolving without a doubt. So there are a few cards that have come through while I was shuffling for all of us for this reading. And one of the things that I've noticed is the fact that this card, the card of co uh, co cooperation you guys I've been butchering words left and right it's because I've got Virgo all throughout my chart and Mercury is currently retrograde so I've been tripping over my own words and my own sentences and the, all, all the things that I've been thinking and saying since Mercury retrograde but it's been such a beautiful reminder to breathe stretch shake let it go and to be in you know slow it down a little bit which I love have you guys heard that song hurt by her and I think it's Stephen Marley, Slow Down. Slow down. Let me love you. That's literally like the vibe that I've been in lately, just kind of slowing everything down and allowing myself to be loved by everything in my environment, right? Everything is a vibe. Everything radiates love from the, the energy that I put into my plants, the energy that I put into myself, to the energy that I put into my family, to the energy that I put into my friends, all of those things are giving back to me. The energy that I put into this house, as much love as I've been putting into it, as much energy that I've been putting into cleansing it and clearing it and you know, getting it ready for, for me to, to root myself here, it has already given me back in high vibrations and a safe space, a sanctuary that I've been wanting for so long. It's so beautiful. But anyways, moving forward. So with the energy of duality and with the energy of Gemini here, we have to ask ourselves, what are we co cooperating with? What are we trying to align ourselves with? And Spirit told me this morning in my meditation, I was stretched out in the sun, you guys, for like 30 minutes because that's as much as I could take. <laughs> the sun is brutal. But I was stretched out in the sun and I heard... Whatever it is that we choose to do, we are going to be successful in it. And sometimes as human beings, when we're working with words, we have a tendency to kind of lock ourselves into one way of thinking and one way of perceiving because we are just so wired for comfort zones. We're so wired for the things that make us feel comfortable. And when we think of the word successful, we think of this grand, beautiful, amazing thing. But the reality is, is that you could be successful, meaning achieving in anything. You could be successful in enabling toxic relationships. You could be um, successful in handicapping yourself from loving with an open heart or receiving love in an open and effortless way. You could be successful in your business, you know, in overcompensating and <laughs> destroying your creative vibes. You know, there's so many ways that success, the word success can show up. 
whatever it is that you choose, whatever your intention is, you will be successful at it because the planets and your your the essence, the core essence of your being is wired for success. It's wired for abundance and prosperity. But whatever it is that you are choosing to align with, whatever it is that you are choosing to harmonize with, whatever you're choosing to co cooperate with is what you will be successful with. So if you're choosing toxic, if you're choosing draining, if you're choosing um, manipulative, destructive, defeating, then that is what will be successful and prevalent in your life. It will continue to show up. So it's at the solar eclipse, my love, that you are guided to be curious and to explore what you are actively cooperating with, what you are actively manifesting and aligning with and harmonizing with, and you are given a second, third, fourth, fifth chance to realign, to recenter, and to reroute yourself accordingly. And when you do this, you guys, we don't do this with judgment. We don't do this with harshness. We don't do this with hate in our heart or or criticism and saying, well, how could I choose this? Because that's not what spirit wants for you and that's not what you want for yourself. And we're not designed to be human beings. In fact, I mean, perfect human beings. In fact, in every choice and every crossroad that we step towards, we are given the chance, the opportunity to to, to choose. And sometimes if we are finishing up the cycle of a choice or a decision that we've made, we can be exhausted, we can be burnt out. And because of that burnout, because of that exhaustion, we then choose from a space that is empty, from a void, because that's what we needed at that time, right? So consider that, the fact that you have made choices and decisions or you've allowed other people to make choices and decisions for you, which is still in a choice all by itself. And by the time that cycle has completed itself from that one choice and decisions, you are in a different place because you, you have evolved in a direction, whatever that direction is. And once you get to that point, you may feel depleted, you may feel energized, you may feel whatever it is, fill in the blank. And from that, you then are open and invited because that's the way life is to make another choice, another decision. So having said that, you guys, please give yourself grace, kindness, and compassion and love and consideration for where you were at and how you were feeling as you were exiting out of one cycle and preparing to enter into the next cycle. It allows you to embrace yourself with grace and kindness because you can see why you chose it and not punish yourself for the decisions that you've made. But now that you're here and now that you're watching this video and now that we're sharing this moment together, we are invited to be curious with where we are going to take our choices moving forward. And when we sit with the energy of Gemini, we are invited to explore and to be curious the shadow as well as the light in every choice and decision that we make because they will show up. <laughs> okay? The thing that we have here too that I find so beautiful and magnificent is the fact that we have the card of innovation which is forced onto us please believe that is not something that i feel like a lot of us human beings are actively choosing right now it is forced onto us why because uranus the planet that rules innovation is squaring off with saturn saturn is retrograde totally dismantling and uprooting the core of where a lot of us have been placed or our our status quo this is not only in our intimate lives it's all over the world it's in our politics, it's in our government, it's in businesses, it's all over, okay? This is the energies that we're working with. And then, as we're being uprooted, we are invited to regenerate. We are invited to be reborn. We are invited to rise up like a phoenix from the ashes into a new world that is more aligned for our highest and greatest good, okay? So, one thing I want to invite you guys to do and to explore today is what do you see yourself truly aligning with? What do you see yourself fully being open to receiving? What are you ready to receive? What would you want to receive? What would you what, what would you want your life to look like? And I don't want you guys to look at just the positive, so the good of it. I also want you guys to look at the aspects that might be difficult and challenging to you. And I want you to call in strength. I want you to call in grace. I want you to call in love and light because it makes the journey forward. I don't want to say more easier, but you will feel the support 
from from our guides, from spirit, from the divine, as they work with you through your own personal transformation, through your own personal healing. And that's a beautiful thing. All aspects of your life are restored right now. All aspects of your life are renewed. All aspects of your life are being surged with you know, <laughs> creative exploration and optimism <laughs> with what can and will happen ultimately depending on the choices that it is that we're making for ourselves okay one last thing that i feel called to say before i close out is the fact that spirit is reminding you right now to remember and to receive the fact that this world is very abundant and this world wants you to prosper be prosperous this world wants you to be successful and you are going to want to be successful in the highest visions of love, light, blessing, and beauty, and lushness that you can possibly fathom, and then some, and then some. It's that additional, it's that additional, because spirit is so generous with what it gives and how it gives, and it wants you to receive a lot, a lot of good things, no strings attached. So be open to that, my loves. Please, please be open to that. Please let me know how you're feeling down below in the comments, what you're manifesting, what you're working with, <clears throat> or if this mes message resonates, go ahead and hit a comment of 222. Hit the like button. Make sure that you're subscribed to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from. <laughs> and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.